and we've each gotten to know him over the years. I was doing the A's pre and post game show for a couple of years. You started working at the radio station. You were coming out to games and uh, he was an awesome guy. I, I, the first thing I thought of, the first thing I always thought of when I thought of Fossey was he had just the manliest handshake I've ever had shake my hand. And he always felt like, you know, I always felt like he knew he could break my hand and stop just short of it hurting. Like, just to have fun, not because he was mean. One of my favorite, one of the favorite things I was involved with was with Ray Fossey was uh, uh, several years ago, the A's, the voice of the A's, Ken Korak had a, a knee surgery, I think. And I filled in for the guy that filled in for him, Roxy Bernstein, when he couldn't do it. And so I got to do some games. And on Friday nights, they used to do a thing where the TV crew and the radio crew would do like a post game wrap up if it was a home game on a Friday night, they called it the A team. Bum, 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 bum. And they had like a whole thing. And so one of those nights I was filling in that night and it was, so it was Glenn Kuyper and Ray Fossey and Vince Catronio and me, I got to do the A team on TV and it was really cool. And earlier uh, that year, when you do a baseball game, you keep scoring a scorecard. Vince had kind of showed me how he keeps track of pitches. So you can say like, Oh, four straight first pitch strikes or that kind of thing. Right. And Ray had always been super cool to me when I was doing the pregame show. He was always so friendly. The elevator would open. There'd be Ray. Hey, there's guy like that. He did that for everybody, everybody. And that night um, I had kept track and I don't even remember what the stat was, but I said something about somebody and their first pitch strikes. And Ray goes, Ray stops and goes like, how do you know that? Like kind of intimidating. And I'm like, cause I counted. And he goes, you counted first pitch strikes? And I said, yeah. And he's like staring at me and he goes, all right, man, I'm impressed. Fist pound. And for a young person out of place, like it just meant a lot. It meant a ton to have that guy's approval because he was so friendly to everybody. But you know, John, he was also intimidating. And um, that was a little moment. It made me feel really good. And I, I, I never forgot it. I remember I probably watched the clip of that more than I listened to any of the highlights that I had from calling those games, you know, yeah. the first big league games I'd ever done. I watched that clip because it was just such like a, a rite of passage to do something that impressed Ray Fossey, I thought. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't, I mean, I met him countless times going to game stuff, but to me, I just felt like I knew that guy a little bit. Like I said last week with Josh Allen, you just feel like, you know, that guy, like I can't, he felt like so many people, the way I grew up, my dad's friends of people that were, my dad was a little older than Ray Fossey, but guys that were, you know, in their 70s, that old school, there was an old school toughness to him, yet he was the kindest guy in the room. Like, he just defined guys that were born, like, in the late 40s, early 50s, that were, you know, their parents were baby boomer. Like, they were, I mean, they were baby boomers. And it's just, you know, I, 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 I got kind of a I didn't I didn't know him at all really besides you know meeting him and but stuff. you'd seen him like operate yeah yeah the yeah, field and, yeah. Stuff. and I I but again I felt like I knew him and yeah. that, that, that type person I, I love Northern California you know I've lived here the majority of my life and like the Ray Fosses of the world they are going away you know like they are they, and the the character of the type people you know now listen it just it feels like we're losing too many Ray Fosses and not replacing them with Ray Fosses. And that just kind of made me like, because it's not just like a tough old school SOB, which he was, but every single person that ever met him said he was the nicest guy in the world. Like the high character guys, yet that were like the fabric of the community. Now he was a famous guy, but I bet if you looked at like the Rolodex of the people that he rolled with, like in the off season, like drank beers with on the front porch where he lived, I bet a lot of normal people yeah. were just the huge influence. And then I also thought, it is somewhat representative. Like when I think Giants first the A's, I close my eyes and I think Ray Fossey, Dwayne Kuyper, Mike Kruger, and Bruce Bochy all sitting around the cage and talking. And Bruce a little younger than those guys, but Dwayne Kuyper's sick. I mean, he missed games this year. Mike Kruko has a debilitating injury that's taken away the muscles. Like those guys, I mean, losing Ray, as someone texted me last night, like, I don't, you know, because I wasn't really watching A's games in the 90s, but, like, Greg Papa, I bet Greg was like, think how much time those two spent together, right, calling A's games in the 90s on television. And then he works with Glenn Kuyper, who is Dwayne's brother, who is also, you know, battling something. 
uh, and they've announced it. I guess he's you know he's battling cancer, a, right? A form of yeah. So it's like you just realize it, these guys are not going to be around that long, and the the fabric of the, just how well think how many fans that probably never met Ray Fossey or never met Dwayne Kuyper. You feel like these people are part of your life, especially with baseball, right? More than any other sport, the amount of games in the Bay Area, like New York, and probably like Chicago, uh, like Vin was with LA, it's a big fucking baseball area. And when I say the Bay Area, I just mean Northern California. You, you in Fresno, Sacramento, like baseball's a, a lot of people consume these teams, you know, and consume those guys. You know those guys better than the players because you've sat with them forever. These guys have been there. You know, I mean, part of the team really since you and I were little kids, and we, you know we're, we're closer to forty now than we are thirty. Especially you now too, guy. You know you're over that thirty-five mark. Uh, so it's just to me, it was just to when it was said that he had been to me, he that defined like sixteen years and not a soul knew publicly like that to me, like that. Mm-hmm. They, our generation, I mean, all of Instagram would know. And again, it, times change and stuff, but. That is the type of guy that just America ain't producing anymore. <laughs> We're just not. And it just, that makes me sad. Yep. I mean, of the people you've met in your life, who do you think uh, heaviest punches probably? I always felt like he'd be on the list. Well, he's part of, I mean, obviously before you meet him, you know, back when people used to tell old baseball stories, like and it was a big deal, like on radio and stuff, like you just do them as like, that's the guy that Pete Rose took out in the all-star game. Right. <laughs> right. Took him out. But then you yeah. realize his career, like he had made all-star games. He had won world series. Do you see the stat last night? Dennis Eckersley, I think was pretty shaken up. Then Dennis Eckersley's no hitter for the Cleveland Indians. One, nothing win. The guy that scored the run. It was Fosse? Was Kuiper. Oh, it was Kuiper. Fossey caught the Wait. game. Eckersley pitched. They're all, but they're all on the Indians. Oh, on the Indians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're on the Indians. Like 1977. I not, I Eckersley's no hitter. Fossey caught him. Yeah. And Dwayne scored Dwayne scored the run. And That's I was cool. I was texting someone. Someone forwarded me that tweet. And I'm starting thinking the Kuiper family, but Dwayne now has known Ray Fossey way longer than you and I have been alive. Like I, I thought last night, like, can you imagine the Kuiper family last night? Probably f- felt like they lost one of their brothers. Think how long that family has known the guy. Yep. <laughs> you know? It's just, you see the baseball world, like, the, the, you know, the stuff people were putting out. Like, it was a big, like, every single person in the baseball community, definitely over, like, 50, and anyone that played in this on this team, you know, in, you know for the A's. Like, Doolittle and all those guys were tweeting. Like, obviously, but, you spend a lot of time around them. Yeah, baseball's unlike any other sport because of the amount of time you spend hanging out with the other people who are in town for four days, because if you play a series, you don't play just a game, right? Like a football game or a basketball game. And you play, so you play a series and you just are around the bat part of the baseball culture. That's I love is you're just there four hours early and you're just hanging out, right? It's less about the research you Google before the game. And it's more about you just go to the field and you're just talking to people. And then what you talk about is what ends up on the air. Like that's the best stuff. That's why the numbers really matter. The analytics matter. They matter the most because it's what the teams use to make evaluations. So if the teams are using analytics, you have to be talking about them. If the te- if it matters to the teams what a player's exit velocity is, or it matters to a- the teams what his weighted on base percentage is, then it should matter to everybody because that's how all these decisions are getting made. It's it's if 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 you're not communicating that to fans, then fans are not getting the full picture of what's happening on the screen or on the field or the court. But that's not always the most entertaining stuff. The most entertaining stuff are the stories that Ray Fossey has and the stories that Ray Fossey gets because Ray Fossey is Ray Fossey. And so he goes to the cage and he talks to somebody. Oh, and I was talking to so-and-so. And he gets those stories because he's been around the game his whole life. I mean, he was what the I think it was the first overall pick in the draft in 1965. He might not have been the yeah. first pick, but he was like a top five pick because I remember going to Boston to do a series, and there was a big thing in the newspaper about that draft that year. He was he was a first round pick. I don't know what exactly. I think he was like top. We never say this in baseball, but he was like a premium top ten type pick 
So, and I think the story was that he didn't know he'd been picked till got the newspaper or something like that. It was some story like that. But think about it, John. You've been in baseball since night in professional baseball since 1965 until 2021. Th- there is a computer in his head that has stories that I can't find on the computer. And I you certainly, know, if I can find them, can't tell them. You know what year the Pete Rose play happened at the home plate? 70, 72? 1970. 1970. That's 51 years ago. 51 years. Like playing at a high level, right? I mean, he was, that's an all star in 19. Sometimes you just say 1970. That's 51 years ago. Yeah. That's a long time. But, you know, RIP, uh, man. But yeah, my point is, like, the amount of people that he, of course, the baseball world loved him. He'd been around baseball since, he'd been around batting cages since 1965. And it's not like he'd been on the field pregame at an NFL game. That means every day, 162 or 162 times a year since 1965 as a player, as a broadcaster. And how many people do you talk to when you're on the field for four? John, you and I would go to game. You would go to a game. You'd never met anybody on a baseball field. You talk to five people. It's easy. Yeah. It's, it's easy. It's inevitable. Just, yeah. Josh Donaldson's just standing there putting pine tar on his bed. You'd be like, Hey man, sweet shoes. He'd be like, yeah, Nike just gave them to me. And then you talk to him for three minutes. <laughs> I know. Daddy, it is, it is so easy to talk to baseball people before a baseball game. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's the opposite of football. Or basketball. It's just it, it basketball's pretty easy too, actually. Same baseball conversation. Is the, baseball is the, like, baseball's the easiest. Baseball is so ridiculously easy. Yeah, it's easy. People just be sitting there in a dugout. Just a guy would just be sitting there, like doing nothing, waiting for his waiting for his team to take BP. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what Ray had. And I then you add lot. to it his personality, the amount of people, how much he had billions of conversations. I know it's crazy. Sad deal. So that's, and he shared it. He shared it. It's really cool that he was him.